Hi, this is Kim with www.embody-light.com. It's been a while since I've made a video. I just haven't, I got a hair hanging, haven't felt like it and um, busy trying to finish up summer things. So, this is Twin Flames Part 2. And what I wanted to talk about in this part of the video is I'm just going to cover real quick, go back and watch Twin Flames Part 1. What a Twin Flame is, is, I'll just cover this briefly. When Source, in the beginning, Source, in order to experience itself, split into millions, billions, trillions of fractals. Now, Source is both masculine, I still got that hair in my eye, masculine and feminine energy. And so after that initial split, those fractals of energy split into a masculine counterpart and a female counterpart. That's what a twin flame is. It's getting more common that people actually have a relationship with their twin flame on earth. But prior to this, it was usually that one twin stayed on the other side and was like a guide to the other one because it was too painful for both twins to um, be in the world at the same time. And uh, quite often they would try to, um, the nefarious beings on the planet would try to destroy that energy because it was too powerful. So my twin flame, I didn't find out till after he died, was actually a very good friend of mine, Jay. He was a gay man that I hung out with quite a bit. Now the part I wanted to talk about so after he died, he committed suicide. There was quite a lot of trauma around that. Um, his life was coming to an end of natural causes soon anyways, but I just didn't know where he went, what happened to him. I had been raised, although I didn't want to believe this, but um, being raised as Catholics, they taught us, and I no longer practice Catholicism, but they taught us that if you commit suicide, you go to hell. So I I was very concerned about this. And watch my last video. I soon found out that wasn't the case. But so he started working and communicating with me. And there were so many things that happened where I knew it was real and I saw him in my world. But what he told me was that this was our last lifetime that we were going to have to be apart. And that he, because it really bothered me, if because I always had felt like this was my last lifetime. Why in my last lifetime would I choose to do it this way and we would not be together? Well, there's several reasons what he explained to me why twin flames choose not to be together. For one, um, it is such a strong draw to be together and you're together and you're happy. And so you kind of isolate and you see no reason to do your spiritual work because you're happy and feel like you're whole together. So that's a part of it. The other part is if one party hasn't done their spiritual work and the other party has and they're at different lengths, it's not going to be a good relationship and it's probably going to dissolve. If you have a dissolved relationship with your twin flame, it is the most painful, horrendous breakup you could ever imagine. So for that reason, many times people did not come together as twin flames. And now Jay in this lifetime, as a gay man, and myself as a heterosexual female, was that was never going to happen, that we were going to be a couple. But we were very good friends, and in a way, that was unique because whenever there's any kind of a romance involved, it can screw up a friendship. It really can. So, just saying, it does. So anyway, so we were very, very good friends. Um, but the thing that kept happening that I did not understand, and this is after some time went on because for the first five months or so, he was right here on the earth plane communicated with, communicating with me. And I had to help him to increase his vibration so that he could cross to the other side. But when, at that 
five month mark when he left I for many years did not hear from him or communicate with him at all I didn't know what that was all about well I had to raise my frequency to be an equal match to his because we couldn't do the work together if I idolized him and kept him up here and thought he was the one who had all the answers and that I was down here struggling well that's not it I had to raise my frequency to be able to connect with him so I had to do more of my own healing work and it took some time until it finally happened but then once I got to a point where I did my own healing work and this was long after he had passed um, two people in particular and I've seen it with others but I used to see it with these two well I still do as a one person I don't see any longer um, I would see when I was communicating with these two be beings they were both men one's my husband and another, another was a guy that I worked with but I could see sometimes their eyes when they were talking to me I'd look at them and I'd be thinking there's something funny going on here you I see Jay's eyes in your eyes and with this other guy that I worked with they would say things every once in a while that I knew were the exact thing response that Jay would have said in that situation and that kept happening over and over and over so what it was was once I raised my vibration to be able to connect with him we were always connected and then other people who were in my field would read that energy and would actually channel him because he had told me and this was so strange I couldn't figure out he told me this through three different sources that he died so he could be with me I'm like what does that mean I thought is he trying to say he's going to be a walk-in or something? And I, I was thinking that's not okay with me. Um, it was, and if that would, that's not what happened. But if that would have been the situation, it would have been an agreed upon thing. So that's, that's how that kind of all worked out. So at the time that he died, I had gotten when he went away I had gotten so depressed that I basically checked out for a couple years I worked and I came home and I slept that's all I could do work and sleep work and sleep I could barely eat I lost so much weight I was so sick and it took me quite a while to move through that depression that was what I had to move through and come out of so that I could increase my frequency and connect with him so now the other interesting thing that I've learned that I want to touch on and I'm going to glance at my notes too before I close um, a viewer wrote in and left a comment on my um, on my last video about twin flames that twin flames actually share one root chakra that made total sense to me because there were some things that have happened that I just couldn't figure out they didn't make sense to me the number one thing is now and this has happened since Jay's decease but the number one thing is when I communicate with him or when I feel him near I feel a buzzing or an energy at the root chakra I never knew what that was well that's because we share a root chakra so when we are communicating I will feel the energy in that area buzzing it's very unique the other thing that I about that that makes sense was some things happened while Jay and I knew each other when he was still alive I'm pretty sure I talked about this in another video but in case not I'll mention it so Jay was still alive and it was at the point we had met and we had been friends and we went to um, I'm not sure if it was it was a fair or a carnival or something with our kids our kids were still young um, young teenagers and I normally do not go on any rides at an amusement park because I get very quickly thrown out of my body um, which is challenging because when that happens I don't feel good I feel dizzy and nauseous for the rest of the day 
But there's a few I can go on. One is the giant swings, the giant slide, and I thought I was going to be okay on a Ferris wheel. So I get on a Ferris wheel with my daughter, and we get up to the top, and it stops. And we were up there for a long, long, long time. I don't know if they were letting people on or repairing something or what, but all of a sudden I started feeling like I was going to faint and throw up. And I laid my head on my daughter's shoulder and I said, oh, honey, I don't feel very good. And she's going, mom, please don't throw up on me. Mom, please don't throw up on me. Please don't throw up on me. <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear Jay as if he's standing right next to me. And he's not. <laughs> he's still alive, you know, miles and miles away. But I hear him as if he's standing right next to me. And he's saying, Kim, get back in your body. And I didn't even know that that's what that feeling meant at the time. I just knew it happened when I got on any kind of ride. And he's going, Kim, get back in your body. And I'm going, I don't know how. And he's going, just try really hard. Get back in your body. And I'm going, I don't know how. I don't feel good. I don't know how. And he goes, just try really hard. He just kept telling me, just try really hard. You can do it. You can do it. Um, so finally, I started to feel a little normal, and then within a few minutes, the the ride was moving. I got through the ride. That was my last attempt on going on any kind of ride at an amusement park, because that's not fun when you feel like that. So the way that that happened is because we're twin flames, and so because we have the same root chakra, he got like an impulse although he didn't I talked to him about this later he didn't know it with his conscious mind but he got an impulse that I was in some kind of trouble and that's why he started communicating with me so that being said all of our lives if because we were connected at the root chakra did not know each other if he got into some kind of um, traumatic situation I would feel it. I'd feel awful and not know why. If I got into a traumatic situation, he would feel awful and not know why. Well, that is because of the common root chakra. You're just connected and you're always going to know, even if you don't know in your mind. So there may be times where your twin is, maybe you haven't met, and they're having a real hard day. By you sending love to them or praying for them or sending light to them, you can make a big difference. If you want to connect with your twin flame, put your hand on your heart and you make an instant connection. You can put your hand on your heart and you can just feel the love that you have for them. The other thing that started happening for me as I was making my twin flame connection, I just want to share this because it's probably happening for other people. When I would meditate, I would see, actually it looks like a piece of selenite, and I have one right here. I would see a white line in my mind's eye, a big white column. Well, pretty soon I started seeing two white columns, like an illuminated 11. Well, if you see that when you're meditating, that is your twin flames energy. You are one column, they are the other column. Now what I used to do when I do that, once I figured out what it was, I'd say let's merge our energy together. And we'd go into one column and then we'd come apart, we'd practice this. So it was very, um, it was very unique. And so, point being, number one, do your own emotional clearing so that you can increase your frequency. Whether your twin flame is on the planet, they may be in a relationship with someone else, um, they may be deceased, not on the planet, you can always connect with them. If you're meant to be together, you will be together. But once you make that twin flame connection within yourself, once you raise your frequency to that level, you have the ability to draw that type of quality relationship into your life, whether it's with your actual twin flame or, um, as Jay calls it, or with a surrogate. Because what he explains to me is that my husband is actually like a surrogate. 
my husband and I love each other very much. That was another point I wanted to touch on too in this. When I first found out about this, it caused some trauma because between my husband and I, because we'd always thought the terms were that we thought it was, was soulmate. We always thought that we were each other's soulmate. And after this life ended, we'd go off into eternity, live together, wait for all our kids to come home and live in heaven as one big happy family. Well, how is that going to happen if he's not really my twin flame, you know? And we both thought about each other that way. And so what I understand is, um, you know, we had to grow through that and realize we're all on our own journeys. We all have our own twin flames and that he and I are probably always going to be connected. We're always, always very good friends and good partners in relationship, but we're not that equal identical match. And I will be with my match someday and he will be with his match someday, but we'll always be friends. It just caused a little bit of, I'm not sure how we are to each other in the relationship. Well, it really made no difference because he's always known about Jay. He's always known he was my very good friend that I loved very, very much. And so he was, a. I was always so impressed by him. He was never threatened by me hanging out with him and having this very close relationship because Jay was like my spiritual partner. We could connect on spiritual levels on levels that I didn't necessarily connect with, with my husband. My husband was more grounded and didn't believe, although he does now in the beginning did not believe in this kind of stuff so much. So it did cause a few problems. The other point I wanted to make was, um, after Jay died, and now I'm trying to remember, I apologize if I talked about this in the first video, I meant to go back and watch it to refresh and I didn't get a chance. But after, no, this was before he died, I kept having these dreams of this house over in this area in Minneapolis. Um, and it looked very familiar to me. And Jay and I would live in this house and my two youngest children were our children. And it was very strange because I kept thinking, why am I living with this gay guy and my two daughters? What I didn't realize is we were a couple. Well, I kept having these dreams showing me that we were a couple. Well, I was just mortified because Jay was freaked out by girls and I was never gonna tell him that. Well. This was all in preparation for after he died, because then after he died and I didn't know I was getting some inklings that he was my twin flame, but I wasn't positive and I got the hugest confirmation. A friend of mine called and she had heard of a workshop that was going on at a local church. It was called Chakra Mirror Man. And it was about twin. Well, the lady kept calling it soul flame, soulmates, but it was actually twin flames. And so my husband and I went to this workshop and as we're driving by, I see the house in my dreams. This happened maybe a couple weeks after I found out about Jay's death. And then she starts explaining about the chakra mirror map and twin flames, because what she's talking about, and there is a book you can get it, is that each of our chakras work together to our number eight. So our crown works together with our root. Our third eye works together with our sacrum. Our throat works together with our solar plexus. Our heart, that's number four. What's the match for that number four? That's your twin flame. So that is what that book is all about. It's called Chakra Mirror Math. The author's name is Snow Angel. If you want to get in and check it out, it's very informative. But she helped me in her book that I found just at the time well, from a friend who recommended it at the time of Jay's passing to help me understand what all of this was. And then in her book, um, she had one technique that she gave, and I don't even think it was so much of a technique where she just described, if you want to know who your twin flame is, ask. And so I did a meditation and I asked, and I'm not always the most visual person. I'm clairaudient, not a, not as clairvoyant as I am clairaudient. So I'm expecting basically nothing to happen when I do this meditation. I thought, well, yeah, we'll see. 
So I do it, and I ask to see my twin flame. And there he is. Jay shows up. And I'm seeing this is before he had crossed over. And so I'm seeing the vision of what he looked like um, when he was on planet. You know, because it had been four years since I'd seen him, so he'd aged some. Um, he used to have longer hair. His hair was shorter and his hair was graying. It wasn't gray at all. And so I saw this image of him, what he looked like now. And I thought, hmm, he's okay. He's looking a little older. I suppose that's normal. I mean, I wasn't really too much stuck on that. But here's the interesting part about it. What I had not yet found his obituary or the picture in his obituary i was just being told this by other people about the death and people that knew him when i found the picture in the obituary because he looked different it was four years later it matched the picture in the vision it looked just exactly like him so that was just kind of a very unique confirming thing for me because once i found out I was very happy because to me, this is how I felt about Jay. He was, I just adored him. I thought he was just the sweetest, most wonderful guy person in the whole world. Um, I felt of him like he was my best friend and would always have my back no matter what. And that's who he was, Jay, my twin flame. So with that, my name is Kim. My website is www.embody-light.com. I have sessions on my website that are for twin flames. And now I'll explain if I didn't cover this in the other video. I really should have gone back and reviewed this. What I do, I don't have any magic genie, magic potions that's going to connect you with your twin flame. But what I do is I help you to correct the energy blocks and increase the vibration so you can connect with your twin flame what i find that it usually is is some form of a relationship or maybe you see your parents relationship modeled horribly what i see is that the people who are having difficulty obtaining a relationship or maintaining a relationship it is because of things that have happened in their past or things they have seen. So what we're going to do is go through and clear out those things or those misconceptions even so that you can be clear and draw to yourself your true love. So with that, and again, I'm just going to say it doesn't matter if it's your actual twin flame or a twin flame relationship. When you are in it, you cannot really tell the difference. So again, I love you all. Have a blessed day. And again, my website is www.embody-light.com. Um, please leave comments if you have questions or need further clarifications on things. I don't always understand that people do not understand things in the same manner that I do. Have a great day. Bye-bye.